Hello there, 585ers. We are here at our final module. Next week, we'll be going over the final. I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. Um, I hope you found something to do <laughs> while we've been closeted away. Um, I've been running a little preschool, frankly, here. And uh, lots of great nieces and nephews, and I'm having a ball. Having a ball. Dancing to Baby Shark. Uh, I have one great niece who um, has Down syndrome, and every day we put on a play where we run the uh, Frozen soundtrack in the background and we act it out together. Uh, we're learning our letters. We're learning to read. We're just having a ball. So what are we going to do? We are going to be looking at something that on first glance you might dismiss. Um, but I'm here to tell you, like so much of what we've played with in this class, um, five years ago, we weren't even talking about Google Classroom. Five years ago, we were barely talking about Nearpod. And now it's front and center, and it's what is expected. So when we talk about AR, VR, we are looking at something that we don't know where this is going to end up. Now, I will give you my biases, like I always have, about what I think uh, this should be, as opposed to maybe what is currently being done. And that's my bias. And I think it has to do with the fact that I want kids to be active learners, not passive learners. And especially with VR, we have so much now that is available for kids through things like Oculus Rift. Um, you know, $5,000 worth of uh, expense will get you a big old computer that sits in your classroom and you have one pair of uh, Oculus Rift goggles and maybe some joysticks to play with. And kids sit there and they can experience being on a space station. But you're not weightless. I, you, you know, my point to this is, yes, I want kids to understand what it is. At the same time, I want them to understand how to create it. And to me, that's the point of what we're going to be doing today. I want people, I want students to experience through coding. And this is, this is a heck of a lot simpler coding, by the way, than what we did last week. Um, and I want them to experience that because I want them to think. I want them to plan. I want them to build. I want them to fail. I want them to realize where the failure point was and then go back and fix it. I want them to problem solve. I want them to work collaboratively. I do not just want them to sit passively with a set of goggles strapped on their heads. And unfortunately, that's what I've seen up to now. Let's go to the pyramids. Well, I'm going to show you how you can do that. You can do that. And kids can do that. And let's have them make those decisions about what's cool. Virtual reality is basically defined as where you're put into a reality. Um, and you are then encapsulated in that reality. And you can interact in that reality. Whereas AR is augmentative reality. I call it the Mayfair effect, um, or Wayfair, excuse me, where you basically, you know, how you can go and look at the furniture and then you can see it in your room by holding up your phone. That, that's augmentative reality. So yes, that's here. <laughs> that's here now, folks. I would not be surprised if very soon now, very soon now, we will see augmentative reality uh, when we go grocery shopping. Uh, we will see it uh, before you go clothes shopping. In other words, you'll be able to see what clothes looks like on you before you head out to Kohl's. Um, you will be able to look at how something's going to, which you already can, in your living room. So let's find out how to do all that. What we're going to be using is a tool called CoSpaces cospaces.edu. Cospaces.edu allows you to build virtual reality environments. It allows you to build augmentative reality environments um, and to 
unfortunately, what we can't do, well, we can, but we can't, is we can't put on, uh, we can't use our phones, that to, we can use our phones to create on, and I strongly urge you to do that, but since you're not here with me, I can't be passing out goggles to you and letting you put your phone in them and experience what you have created. You get my point? You're not passively just sitting there looking at something. You have created the something you're looking at. Um, with AR, though, you can do that. You can create things and then hold up your phone uh, and then see them sitting there in front of you, and then you can literally uh, manipulate them with your hands. Yes, you can. Uh, let me show you how I do this when we actually class. We use tools like Google, um, Google Goggles. Here you go. Uh, as you can see, they're stupidly simple and very inexpensive. Uh, we like them because they're very inexpensive and you're not going to hurt anything. Um, I use this. This is what I use uh, when I do this with kids uh, and when I do it with adults. Okay, again, you have to have a phone to do this. There's nothing, you know, the phone is supplying the um, material. Let me show you one more because this is so much fun. Um, and I do this in the summer with uh, middle school kids that I run a little camp with. This is called a mega cube. Uh, this is how you can do AR. And the beauty of it is, is when you create with it and you hold it up, what you have created with it shows up. Uh, as you can see, this kid here is seeing the planets uh, when he's holding the cube and you can turn it and see it. Uh, the thing I like about it is, as you can see with this one, the kid is sitting there with the goggles on and the cube, and now he can see what he's created in the virtual space. Now, they make these uh, for free. You can download the magic patterns that are on the cube, and then you can put the cube together. The problem with that, of course, is it's paper, and it's not going to hold up as easily or as well as this stuff holds up. And oh my goodness, you know, they're $19.99. That's, that's way too expensive. I got mine for a um, dollar at Walmart. So if you want to play with it and see what can be done, the thing, and we'll show you examples of this in here in just a second. Uh, the things that can be done are just startling. When I do this with um, kids, one of the things they discover very quickly, and I'll show you, <clears throat> is that in the VR space, you can code in um, things where you walk around in a VR space and you can have bosses, monsters, you know, that sort of gamey thing in there. And if they touch you, you're, you die and so on and so on. Yes, it doesn't take long for kids to figure all that out. So let's go. Uh, I'm not going to spend a long, long time with the, here's where you go. Click, 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 because I'm telling you, this is easy. I'll show you some of the things that you kind of need to know to um, know where things are. That's basically what I'm trying to help you with. Uh, and then you're going to, if you just watch this first video, um, you can figure things out. This is the virtual ex exhibition space, and this is part of what you could do. I'll go back to what we can do. Here are the basics of code blocks. Watching these videos will get you there. Here is the code block handout. So it has all the different blocks and what they do. It's much easier to understand, frankly, than Scratch. Much, much easier. Um, here is the playlist, which basically is every video that shows you how to do everything you need to work with inside of CoSpaces. So what I would do is I'd have this open, and then I'd have another tab open, and then I would, and then the tab is where I would be doing my actual CoSpaces work. And then I could come back in here and I could click on these various videos and show me. They're very short because it doesn't take you long to know how to do it. But let me back up because I'm getting ahead of myself because I like this stuff. Um, and what I want to show you is what the assignment is because there's one or more. If the co-spaces has you now going, oh, no, not another coding thing. I got another chance. I've got another activity for you to do. So what I'm asking you to do is to design a co-space that is a virtual reality space. Then I want you to develop a virtual reality landscape of your vision for the earth in 20 years. I've done this with uh, middle school kids, and it's rather frightening what they come up with, to be quite honest with you. 
And so that could be one that you could do. Or uh, you could create a virtual reality space, create an exhibit or environment that reflects an area of your content. I will show you how to do that as well. You may use a co-space from the gallery. In other words, if somebody's already created one and you like it and you want to use it, well, use it. Uh, make sure you do a remix of it and change up some of the parts to reflect your ideas and your focus. Or, or you can build a virtual tour with the Google VR tour creator. Um, and um, this is about as easy as it gets. <laughs> you basically put in uh, addresses or places. And if the Google has a VR, which the Google has just about every place, uh, you know, you can then pick that and you can build the tour. So in other words, you can go to what are the, uh, what are the holy places in the world? And you can take kids to those places. You can take them to Mecca. You can take them to Rome. Um, you can take them to, and I forget where it is in Japan, where the Buddhist temple is, but you can take them to all those places and they can literally, you know, turn around and look at it. Okay. You ready? Let's go. So what you have to do uh, first is you're going to have to register. So you come over here and register. And you're going to join this class. And the class code is out there. <laughs> out there where I just left it. So let me go back out here. So your class code is right here. XMCVX. Okay. You put that in to here. And then you can join the class as a student. Okay. Easy peasy. I'm going to log in as little old me. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once you get in, this is what it'll look like. Once you get in, you just come over here and you click on CoSpaces. Boom. Here you are. Now, this is what I'm talking about in terms of the gallery. So if you want to go in here and pick something that's already been made. So if you want to create an exhibition, look at this. They've already got COVID-19 ones in here. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, you can pick any of these that are already made and feel free to use them. Okay. Um, or you can go and you can create your own. Creating your own isn't that difficult to do. Uh, the coding is, whoops, the coding is fairly straightforward and fairly easy to understand. So it's not like you've got a lot of stuff that you have to deal with, and I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna create a co-space. And once I do that, the first thing it asks me is, are you creating an AR or a VR experience? I am creating an AR, excuse me, a VR experience. Notice it also gives you the choice of the cube over here. That's the thing I was talking about. You can hold up and see what you've created on it. So we're going to go here. We are going to create a 3D environment because we want to be able to move around and look around and look at all the stuff. So I'm going to create a 3D environment. Now, here's where the fun starts. Look at what you have here. You have this grid, and in your grid, you have a camera. And you'll notice that the camera is showing you where it is looking at. When you click on the camera, up pops this little box here that lets you control the camera. So if you want to move it down or up, you just click on that and you move your mouse. Now, why would you do that? Think about the camera. The camera is now seeing almost at the same level as the base here, okay? If I go up, the camera is kind of up in the air and looking around. So you that's the first thing you have to decide is how your camera is gonna look. Also, you mouse over the little ring around the camera and you can turn it. So now you can decide what the camera is gonna see when you land, in other words, when you first start the environment. So obviously, when you first start your environment, you're going to want to put things in front of this camera. Got it? I can also go here, and that allows me to change up the transition mode. Don't worry about it. Just get your camera where you want it to be. 
Next, we need to put our environment in. And when I did this with kids, the first thing they realized was that they could have a cloudy environment, they could have a sunny environment, or they could have a night environment. <laughs> and the ones who wanted to make the scary uh, walk around in VR land environments, because when you get this done, if you put the CoSpaces app on your phone, and then if you have a you know cardboard or one of the holders and you put your phone in it and start it and you put it on, you're actually in that environment and you actually turn around just like I'm doing here. You actually, as you move, you're actually moving around inside the environment. That is the power of the thing. I'm gonna be happy <laughs> and stay here. Thank you very much. But now, once I've done that, I can decide what my environment's gonna be. And those, these are the choices it gives you. Some are very detailed already. In other words, if you look at the city over here, you've already got you know, a, a pretty good idea of what your uh, story, your background, your virtual environment is going to be. I'm gonna cheat, or cheat out a little bit. I'm gonna pick a water. And you'll see why in just a second here. Now, notice where my camera is, okay? Notice how I can move the camera around. And if I wanna go up, I can move the camera, oops, sorry. I can move the camera up. Let me turn that off. I don't want it to be in transition mode. I can turn the camera up, I can spin it around. Now, comes the fun part. So Steve says, in 20 years from now, what is the world going to look like? Well, I'm going to say that I think the world's going to be in a world of hurt if we don't do something about um, this climate change. And so I'm going to show in my picture, I'm going to go in here and find some buildings. And I'm going to put them into my environment and watch what happens if i pull them down into the environment they will actually go under i can turn them sideways if i want to to emphasize that sort of they're kind of in a tilt you see it going in the water there okay so i can sink it in other words okay now, if I pull it forward, that puts it into the front of the frame. And we've already talked about that if we pull it out of the front of the camera, then it's not going to show up when I land. Okay, I'm gonna go grab another building and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put it into my shot and I'm going to drag it down so it's in the water as well. And I might tilt it a little bit too. You see how I'm doing this? So I'm clicking on them and then I'm tilting them and then I'm basically putting them into where I want them in my shot. Okay. Very dystopian, isn't it? But I think we're in for a world of hurt if we don't do something. So here I go, I'm gonna do another one. And when they come in, they come in the size, okay? And you just basically just have to hit this right here and that shrinks them. You click and you hold on to it, and that brings them down. Okay. And I can put another building in here. And I can do the same thing. Now, let me show you when I say that this is a 3D environment, what I mean. If I click on my left mouse button, and I start swinging around, you see, I'm in, a th I'm in a 3D environment. And if I'm really gonna get serious about this, and this is the thing I'll challenge you to do, start putting more buildings in. In other words, start populating your little watery world or my little watery, water, waterly world that I have created. And I'm putting in more. Why are they looking like this? Because they're farther away. 
I might want to put in some nature. And I can drag him down to scale. And as you can see, he's going in the water. Okay. And again, as I swing around, right in front of me are all the buildings that are kind of, you know, teeter tottery looking. Kind of sad, isn't it? <laughs> That's located, all this is located in the library, right here. From the library, you have all these different kinds of objects and people, by the way, that you can put in here. So let's put in do I want to put any more houses in? Maybe. Um, let's see, let's put this. I already got that. No, I don't. Okay, let's put that over here. And of course, you know, like we've been doing, let's bring it down so it's in the same scale as everything. And this one I might turn this way a little bit. There we go. Okay. And I can, you know, I can keep spinning around here and adding more buildings uh, and, you know, adding more dystopian uh, <laughs> looks to everything here. And as you can see, it's three-dimensional. Can you see the building behind the buildings? Kind of cool, huh? Now, when I when I do this way, when I tilt this way, what do I notice? Well, Steve, your scale is a little off out here. So maybe what I need to do is I need to make them a little bit bigger so they, they fit better into my scale. And there we go. Trick. Show you a trick real fast. Right click on it and you can duplicate it. So you don't have to keep adding it. Just basically go in and if you get it the right, what you want, right click on it, duplicate it. And that way you can have more than one at the same time. A lot easier to build, you know, when you want to do a whole bunch of them doing that instead of having to go in here and, and constantly adding them and adding them and adding them. The other thing you need to be aware of when you do the right click, you'll notice it has a name up here. It's called Building 7 because it's the seventh one I've put in here. Um, and we'll get to code here in just a second. This is where you basically can, also you can change how it looks. You can change its color. You can change its opacity. In other words, if you want it to be darker, I mean, if you want it to be see-through, you can. Uh, you can transform it. What does that mean? Well, instead of, you know, trying to figure out how to get it to go up and down and all that, you can literally just go in here and change the scale. In other words, you can say it's it's 0.5 or 0.25. So you can have all of that. You can have, uh, you can say things. <laughs> you know, we'll show you a better way of doing that in just a second. Okay, get it? So one of the things you want to make sure you do is you want to make sure when you go in here, um, if you're going to be, acting upon these right now all they're doing is they're my background right they're just the things that are in my background if i'm going to act upon them and have them actually do stuff i'm going to want to click on it and then go in here to where it says code and i'm going to make sure it says use in co blocks and i turn it on if i don't do that then i can't do anything with this building in other words, if I, I might go in here and might want to have it rocking back and forth like it were, you know, bobbing up and down in the waves. But, yeah, I have to turn that on. Well, let's go down here and let's start adding some things to kind of emphasize the fact that we're in this sort of watery world. Uh, let's go to water. Okay. So now I can add things into my little scene here. And that's an awful big dolphin. I'm going to turn it around so it's going the right way. Okay. And I'm going to, remember what I said? I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to transform it. And I'm going to go, it's one, one right now. Let's see what happens if we make it 0.5. In other words, half the size. 
Okay. And that's looking a little bit better. You know, if I want to, I can go in and I could make it 0.25 to make it even smaller. There we go. Now he's a little more he's a little more in scale with my well, you know, what I'm trying to show here. I will right click on him, I will go to code, and I'm gonna turn on code. All right. So it knows what it is. Done. Animation, it already understands what it is that I have picked. In other words, it sees the fact that it's a dolphin. So it is already going to give me some things that the dolphin can do. As you can see, you can have the dolphin do that classic, uh, you know, dolphin thing where they laugh. It can do the jump. It can do a high jump. It can swim fast. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to swim fast. And now I have a dolphin in there who's actually doing something. I can do a material. I can change its color. I can, you know, do all those things. But what I want to make sure I do is turn on the code, the use in code blocks. Otherwise, I can't make it do anything except just stay there in one place. There we go. So now I have a little guy down in here. And if I go over here to co-blocks, I want to use the co-blocks. I don't want to use script. And it says when something is, play, when the play button is, is clicked. Let me get this out of the way. Go down here, please. Um, I want to get over here. There's my little guy. See my little dolphin down there? Okay, now when you click on that, it automatically understands that you have selected the dolphin. And as you can see, if I bring that up here and I set animation of dolphin to, there's those things again. There's two ways you can get to them. That's what I'm trying to show you. So let's do a swim fast. Okay, and we could have the dolphin say something. Now, he won't talk. He can just have it. If only you listen to us. Okay. So now he's going to be saying something. Now, as you can see, We've got the same kind of setup as we did in Scratch. We've got these different uh, organizations of uh, blocks. What I'm here to tell you is they're much easier to work with. Much, much easier to work with. Now, if I want my little guy to move, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to bring over that block. That'll make my little guy move. And I want him to move, let's say, five meters forward in 10 seconds okay we'll get to path in just a second okay because when you put a path in uh things get really kind of cool you can scale him up so that he actually gets bigger so it looks like he's swimming towards you that sort of thing under actions we just did the one where he can have an animation he can say things uh, he can think things. Uh, you can set the color. You can set the opacity. Okay. So you're doing a lot of stuff here. Now, this is what I want to just stop and show you. So we've got a panel that we can put in here. This is probably one of the coolest parts of using CoSpaces. This is where I can talk to you. So I'm going to drag that in here. And as you can see, it's waiting for me to put a title in here. And I can put as much in as much text in here as I want. So that's my title. Then down here is where my text is. Now let's see. Let me go out here. Uh, let's go look and see if we can find some text we can put in here. Sea level rise prediction. Okay. 
sea level rise, coastal communities at risk. Let's see what it says here, if I can borrow some of that. Um, no, I don't want to help. I've already done that. Sea levels are rising. Tides are inching higher. High tide floods are becoming more frequent. Hundreds of da, 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 da. Yeah, Okay. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to use it in my little thing that I've just created. Or I could just paraphrase it. I, you know, if we're worried about using, I guess I should be worried about that. Um, I should be worried about using somebody's work. But you get what I'm doing here. I can literally just go and find information. Well, you know, let's let's look a little bit, see if there's something down here in our good friends at Wikipedia. Oh, here's one from the government. We're allowed to use that. Let's go look and see what it looks like. Thank you. I'll use that. Okay, so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back into my co-spaces. And I'm going to paste that right there. Boom. We now have, this will show up in my VR here in just a second. Are you getting the idea? Could I go back out here and if I wanted to, because we know that dolphins swim together, we could duplicate him. So now I have two dolphins. Well, how about if we had more than two dolphins? Can I do that? I can duplicate again. And I can move them around. They don't have to be in a line like that. I can also, if I want to actually have them move as a group, I can come in here and I can right click and go over them. And then if I click on one of them, well, it's supposed to, let's do it again. Right click, drag over them all, come back. And if I click on one of them, I think it's a right click. Yep. If I right click on one of them, I group. So now this is this acts as a whole unit. Okay. So I can move them around. Or if I really want to have a whole bunch of dolphins out here, I could right click on them again and duplicate again. And now I've got a whole pod of dolphins swimming around out here. Okay. So this is how you can add lots and lots of stuff to your scenes. Now, let's go back over here under actions and events. And does this look familiar? Okay. So this is our old friend, the forever. <laughs> um, you can do things with um, moving your dolphins if you want to keep them going. This is under control. So I can bring this over and I can put everything into it and it'll just keep doing it over and over and over again. The other thing that I can do is I can add a path. Uh, down here where it has all the variables and values and all of that, uh, if you're really into this and if it really turns you on, go look at the videos. They show you how to do it. It's easy. Um, you know what? Can we put, let's put in a shark. I'm forgetting the shark. All right, let's put a shark in here. And we'll have him out here. And let's have him swimming toward the camera. That would be cool. So I'm going to put him down in the water. And I'm going to make him smaller, obviously. Okay, you're back there now, Mr. Sharky. And we'll have him start coming towards us. And we can put him down in the water. You see how I'm doing all this? Okay. So, um, and if we could find the music, you know, the Jaws music, we could have that playing in the background. But you get the idea. I've got a shark in my water now. And when I get to him, what do I do? I right click on him first. I want to go to code and I want to turn on co blocks. You always want to do that. Now, what'll happen is if you notice over here for the various things I have over here, if I now click down, it'll see there's a shark there. Okay. In other words, all the things that are in your shot, it now sees them 
and it can do something with them. He needs to go down the water a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So I can click on him and I can do the same things that I've been doing over here. But let me show you how to make it really cool. If you go down here to special, you have these tools right here and they're called paths. And so you can put a path into your shot. Now, things I urge you to do is as you're working on things is to move the scenery around so it becomes easier for you to see what you're doing. Okay. So like right now, I need to get out there to where my sharky shark is. So I'm going to move the scenery around uh, so that I can see him better and as to what I want to do with him. As, as I can see right now that one of the things I need to do is I need to drop him down a little bit more. He's just not down low enough. What I can do now is I can bring in a path. And I can bring the path out there to him. And I can turn the path so that it's facing toward the camera so that when I, I lost my path. Let me try it again. I can take it out here to him. One of the things that I think, you know, that um, helps is if I drag to scale, okay, I can pretty well get an idea of what I want to do with my path. And I also can go ahead and start turning it because I want it to be pointing at my friend out there. And I also can make it bigger if I want to make it bigger, okay, so that I can have an idea of what I've got. So I, I can go over here, I can stretch it out, I can turn it, I can do all those things to it that I need to do. Let me bring him in here a little bit. Here we go. Make it a little bit easier to work with. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to put him on the path. I'm going to click on the path. And I'm going to bring the path right at coming us. You with me? Um, and I can either drag to lift or I can drag it down. Uh, if I want, I can go in and I can change up the path by I can click on it and I can change where dots are. Once I get the dots, kind of like if I brought this pen, I can then change up the motion around it. I could have him do a circle. You know what? Why don't we do that? Let's have him do a circle. So I can edit the path and I can go in here and I can play with how it looks and all that. But I think what we see how I clicked on it and now I can do that to my path. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. But if I had put in a circle one, I could have him swim in different, uh, you know, circles. So I can go in here and I can edit the path and it's a little dot and I can change up how I want it to go. You got to get right on the dot, though. That's the only problem. So see, I can have him go run, run, come at me. I did that by right-clicking on it, on the path, edit the path, and then I can come in and I can put drop a dot, and then I can grab that dot and I can change up the way I want it to go. Okay? Just so you see that. So that's how I can build my own path. Or I can come down here and drag one of these in, and as you can see, now the path already has the dots on it and I can move them around and I can decide then that I want my shark to come into the shot, but then to circle around. OK. He's not attached to anything, so he's going to go away when I get ready to do this. Let's go over here. And now what we can do is we can go up and we've got to get our buddy out here, Mr. Shark. We've got to get him doing stuff. So remember how we did all this? We went up here. I can do if I, well, I got to get my shark first. So I'm going to bring my shark in here and I'm going to pick him. Remember, you have to select. So I'm going to set the animation of shark to. I'm going to drag that in here. Right underneath here, because I want my sign. 
Okay, and I'm going to have him sneaky swim. Oh, let's do a sneaky attack. Okay, so I have my animation of my shark set to sneaky attack. Oh, but here's the scale. You know all that. Okay, here's the speed. Okay, but now I can decide how I want my shark to move based upon the fact that I have a path. So I'm going to drop him in here. Okay. Got it. So now what I've done is I have towed the shark. He's going to move towards me. Uh, the dolphins are going to swim. Um, well, they don't have a. Let's let's use the dolphins. Let's attach them uh, to the circle path. So let me move this around a little bit so I can see where my dolphins. Here we are. So here we go. We're going to select the group and. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I don't want them moving on their own. I want them animating, but I don't want them moving on their own. So you can see animation swim fast. And it says, okay. So now we're going to put them. And I'm not, let me check. I think, do I have a name over here? Ungroup. Aha. Uh -huh. See, I forgot to turn on the code. So you can't, I don't have a name for it. Now I do. So now when I select them, that group, you'll see in here, it calls it group. Okay. Group one. Boop. So group one. Group one is now on the round path. And craziness will now ensue in just a minute. I'm going to move this over so that they're close to each other. Because otherwise it'll jump. Okay. The whole group will jump over to the path. And we don't want that. We want it to look more natural. So I'm going to put them next to each other. And I'm going to slide that out. And I can, I can move this thing any way I want it to move. Okay. So if I want them to go way out there, far away. I can. Now, the one rule when I do this with kids that I try to teach them that I'm not doing <laughs> uh, is that I every time I add a new element into this, I play. In other words, I go up here and I play just to see how it's going to look. So if I hit play now, as you can see, I've got little dolphins swimming around the thing if only you listen to us and they're saying it over and over again and then the sign comes in okay now notice that it'll let you it'll it knows how to give you more signage if you need more room it gives it to you and then you've got an x to close it all out and the shark sneakily swam by us let's see where is he I, I don't know why I find this so cool. The fact that I can literally turn 360 degrees around and see everything. I just find that amazing. If I need to go back and work on it some more, see him out there? I saw you. I saw you, you sneaky shark sneaking around out there. Bam. Fun. Um, but serious, <laughs> this is, I think one of the, the best tools that I can come up with for kids to use, to think, uh, and to develop. And the beauty of it is it's very cinematic. Whereas scratch is very, you know, 2d, um, you can make scratch 3d, 
but it's a whole lot of work and it's a whole lot of, th can you do stuff in here like you can with a game? Oh dear, yes you can. So down here where you've got uh, the various events that you can do, here's the controls. In other words, I can run this forever if I wanted to. If something happens, then something else happens. You can run parallel. In other words, what I could do is I can have all of this stuff going on at the same time. And all I have to do is drag this over and put all the little click, you know, put it in. And then I can have that happen. Um, you can delete things as if they're being attacked. Select variables. Uh, where is the one I'm looking for? Collisions is what I'm looking for. So if you touch something or if something touches you, um, you can disappear. And uh, it's, see where it says remove? Remove when item is clicked or when item is touched. Okay. So those are some of the things you can do. There it is, collisions. When dolphins, let's go look at this. When dolphins collides with, let me move it over here so you can see it. When dolphins collide with shark, which will be over there, then they can enter or they can exit however you want it to, to happen. Uh, and now, yeah. so you have the ability to turn this into a game. In fact, out here, here is, where's the game? Where's the game? Where's the game? There's a game out here. Yeah, the curse of the coast spaces. Uh, you're trying to avoid being touched by this um, pumpkin. Here's another one, a VR game. Oh, let me show you how to, the other thing I said you could do is do remixes. So if we look at this house over here, if we wanted to use that house as the basis for what we think the world's going to look like, you know, in 20 years. I can go in here and I can click on that. And here's what somebody thinks the house is going to look like in 20 years. And we'll do a little play. And then there's a text here that you could put stuff into it. This is about as easy as it gets. Oh, look, they have a car driving. That's kind of cool. And maybe what we could do... Hmm, is we could see if this would be, let's go back into the actual thing itself. Let's see, is that, aha, uh -huh. so I could take one of these panels off by duplicating it, and then I could put it on top of the car. Oh, it won't let me take it out of the regroup. Uh, why won't you let me take it? Well, I could ungroup it, but I'm not gonna go to all that. You know what to do. So I'd have to ungroup it and then I, oh, I can detach it. There you go. All right, so let's detach it. See, it won't let me. I'll bet you though I could find it in the library. Oh, let me show you about the library before we move on. You see how lost I get in this thing? So that's what I'm talking about. You could go in here and you could play with something that's already been made and make it your own. Go into the gallery, look around in here, Find one that you would like to use. Here's the house I was just showing you. Uh, and if you decide that you want to use it, you can go in and you can do a remix. That's what this item is right here. And so you can go in and you can click on that remix. And there you are. You basically now have, you are now the blank canvas that somebody's already filled in this house for. And so you could now start adding the things in that you think would represent what it's going to look like in 20 years, what our house is going to look like in 20 years. And everything works. You know, you've got all the ability to right click on things, do code, um, all, all the things that you already know how to do. So that's one thing you can do with the remix. You can do that. Let me go back and show you what I was. Let me go back. Let's just use this one as an example. I think when you play it, all it does is that, yeah, see the turban up there? It moves, whoopee. Uh, let's go back and let's do a remix of that. I'm gonna remix that. So here I am. When I go down here to uploads, I can do a web search for stuff. Got me? So if you know anything about Giphy's, 
Giphy right here. Those are animated GIFs. In other words, they move. So I could do a search in there. What am I going to search for? Um, for giggles. A helicopter. Because everybody will have a helicopter instead of a car in 20 years from now. You know what? Let's see. Let's let's roll the dice a little bit and let's put in a gyrocopter. Gyrocopters are supposedly easier to fly than helicopters. And not, not good choices here. Well, goodness gracious, look at that crazy thing. I could put it in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop it in. Uh, thank you very much. I don't know, you know. And if I then go and play it, let's see what it does. So I've got my little... <laughs> I got my little gyrocopter in there. Well, you know, it looks more like a drone than it does a gyrocopter, I guess. But what I'm trying to show you is you have the ability to go in here. You can upload your own stuff. Um, you can do the web search. You can do it as GIFs. Or you can do it just as pictures. Or you can just go out and find a sticker. And no objects were found as that. I'll bet you if I go into uh, Bing, I'll find something. There you go. So now if I go in the Bing, I can now add my gyrocopter into my picture. And I can go from there in terms of, you know, how I want to build it and, and how I want to use it. Simple as that. Isn't that cool? Oh, multiple scenes. You can do multiple scenes. So if you want to change it up, move from one scene to another, you can do all that. Uh, so let's see, I've shown you how to take one of these and remix it, and make it yours. And that's under gallery up here, or you can go to co spaces and just start with creating your own incredible, um, idea. And so that's co spaces. Do you get the feeling Steve likes co spaces? Now I'm going to show you the other way to go. If you don't want to do all of that, or if you want to do both, here we go. We're going to do Google VR Tour Creator. Again, what we're doing is, is we can build virtual realities of anywhere in the world. Get started. So the first thing you have to do is you're going to build your new tour. So I'm going to click on new tour up here and I'm going to call it. What am I going to call it? Call it religious sites. Okay. And we're going to spell it the right way. Sorry about that. Let's visit the most holy places on earth to look for similarities and differences. Okay. I can drag an image here. It, in fact, it's, you know, it says you should have one. And I don't really have an image. Um, I don't think I really have an image to use. So, okay, will you allow me just to put something in here? Um, let's see if I can get something out of our classes. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw that in just for... Okay, so I've got an image here. Otherwise, I would have gone and, and done a little, you know, looking for something. And it was sort of a religious uh, iconery. So, bam, search for places. So, if I type in Vatican, let's see what it does. Hello. So, here I am in Vatican City. And I can literally walk around inside of this space. 
Uh, that's the Vaticano. I don't want to be there. I want to be in Vatican City. Thank you. So let's go back and see how it looks like if I do that. There we are. More like it. So now I can literally spin around and see. I can zoom in, zoom out. Okay. If I can find these images, and if you do Google searches, you can find these images, by the way. I can upload them so I can make this even richer. All right, so let's try Mecca. Looks like we don't have one, which I can understand. Oh, there it went. Let's try Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Um, let's see if that really is the case or if it's just my pictures are loading in slow. So let's try Jerusalem. No. Okay, here we are at the Holy Wall. And I need to flip this over. Not sure why it's upside down like this, to be honest with you. And I'm trying to move it in the right direction. I think I got it. Nope, I'm still upside down. You get the idea. I'm moving it around so I can get it into the right um, way to look at it. And what I do is, as I just go through here, I add a scene. Bam. Thank you for fixing that. And when it's ready, um, I can do a publish. And when I do the publish, it'll tell me I'm done. And now I have the ability to, now I have the ability to look around where I am. And if they've done it with the camera, I can walk out. Doesn't look like they did that here. Okay. I can put an audio file in. You don't have to. You don't have to do any of that sort of stuff. But you get the idea. As I go through and add each each area, each scene, um, I need to make sure that I add a little bit of talking about it. So that, let's try one more. Um, I'm really surprised I can't see Mecca. Let's see if it'll let me see Dome of the Rock. There you go. And then there's the Dome of the Rock right there, obviously. I should send them some feedback and say, hello, would you please... Um, Add some uh, pictures of Mecca. I'm sure there's some that are allowed, although it may be that it's not allowed. That's tour creator. Oh, all right. Now what do we do when we get done with all this stuff? <laughs> 
Sorry about that. Ooh, look. Now, see, I can walk up to this one. Now, that's kind of cool. I like that. Okay, so when you're finished, after you've published it, and once I have published it, there's my link. Copy it. Put it into the assignment space. In co-spaces, even eat well, it's just as easy. I was going to say it's easy, but it's just as easy. So in co-spaces, uh, basically what you're doing is you're going to share your co-space that you have created, and you will get my marvelous, uh, scary scene here. I'll go to share. Make sure that um, you've got to change that up. How do I do that? I forgot how to change it up, folks. I know how to do this. Honest, I know how to do this. I come into here. There we go. And I'm going to... Um, Yes, you click on share, Steve. <laughs> okay, the only people that you can share it with are the only people uh, that you give them the thing. Or you can put it into the gallery and then everybody can see it. You're gonna go share unlisted um, and you can allow people to copy if you want it to be. Or you can go in here and you can say publish the gallery, which means everybody can see it, uh, however you wanna do it. And then you're basically just going to get the code. And you put that into your little, uh, you know, listing. Okay. There's your code right there. Share the link. Or you can embed it, which is kind of cool. Or you can put in a QR code, which is even cooler. So if I share the link. And then if I were to go up here and put that link in, it takes me to the co-spaces and it will pop up and I will see my crazy watery world. There it is. And there's the poor dolphins. And here's the shark who is coming at us. If only you listen to us. And then here's the climate change. So that is module seven. That is our last module. Um, have fun with this one. As you can see, it's it's one of the ones that I get kind of lost in. I really do enjoy it a lot. Uh, and if you are having any problems, you know what to do. You send out a text and you yell at me and you say, hey, Steve, uh, that was fun, but how do you get that thing out of there and put it into the assignments? I'll tell you. Make sure that you go in and you're registering yourself as a student. And there's your code. Uh, you don't have to do anything to use the uh, Google tour. You just build it. As always, as always, thank you for being in our class. As always, please stay safe. Um, reach out if you need to, 502-457-2937. Next week. We will do our final, and then we'll close the book on 585 for spring 2020. Again, thank you all for being here, and thank you, and be safe.